okay, this is the second part of the interview. <laughs> um, well, um, let's see. Could you continue talking about what you yeah. prep, how you prep, did prep with um, Andre? Well, with Andre specifically, we met so many times. Mm -hmm. He took me to the AFI library uh -huh. a lot. We would go to La Panne all the time and sit uh -huh. there with like our books and our scripts. Um, and I remember him showing me really early on an image of uh, like what he thought the woman maybe was, like the mm -hmm. vibe of her world, mm -hmm. um, a picture, a photograph. And I looked at it and it was really dark and she was really like dark. Uh -huh. and it was really kind of like gross. There was something about it that was kind of like seedy. Uh -huh. um, and I was like, no, that's not her world. Her world is like more this image. And then I mm -hmm. showed him a picture of a, a, a naked woman who was very well lit mm -hmm. in a white room. Um, and it was just, it, there was something about it that was really intimate and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is what we're trying to draw out, you know, from her. Huh. And he just instantly got it because he understood like visually. Um, yeah what I was talking about and that like the sexy in the film isn't exactly like there's nothing gross about it yeah like, there's like an innocence to it yeah um so we just talked about that we talked about how you know I feel like in the script and in the film Jason's character really brings light into her life mm -hmm. and so the entire film goes from dark into mm -hmm. a much lighter place it gets mm -hmm. lighter as the film goes on mm -hmm. um because of Jason mm -hmm. and his character and uh and it was great, you know, Andre initially was like shocked that I wanted to shoot everything in wides. Yeah. My whole thing, that. <laughs> my whole thing yeah. was like, this film's going to be in wides. Master shots. <laughs> yeah. And he was yeah. like, well, you need like not to do that. <laughs> and I was like, well, what do you mean? So then we talked about that and yeah. thank God for him because uh, if the whole thing had been in wides, I don't think it would have been the film that it became. Yeah. Um, How did he talk? to you about that, what did he exactly well, say? He was like, you need to cut, you know, you're going to have yeah. to cut into stuff. Yeah. You're going to want to do that, you're going to want the option of that. Yeah. So you're going to want to have close-ups on people mm -hmm. and you're going to want to have inserts, you mm -hmm. know? And um, so in my mind it was sort of colour-coded, the, the, the shot list was kind of colour-coded like mm -hmm. for every scene in the sense that I knew that I wanted the wide mm -hmm. and if we got the weight, I felt really good about it, and I could like I could yeah. I could realize like I, I, in the moment I would realize like oh we got it in the weight. So yeah. We don't it, like if when we were going in for close ups mm -hmm. it was nice to get them. Mm -hmm. Um, but like if we needed an insert or something mm -hmm. or if that was what we were supposed to shoot and mm -hmm. we were running out of time I could be like let's keep going because I knew that we got it. You yeah. Know? So. And why did you want it to be in wives? Well, I think because I was coming so much from this idea of like scenes. Um, from 1970s films where mm -hmm. they're just like allowed to play out like mm -hmm. big scenes with many yeah. people I like that feeling I like the audience watching like a shot of the entire scene as opposed yeah. to you know being manipulated uh -huh. by coming in closer mm -hmm. um, so that was just my choice but it was really kind of also driven by this idea that like it's a very voyeuristic film in the sense that like she's watching videos all the time and mm -hmm. he's watching her a lot of the time mm -hmm. and um, that vibe kind of came in to the film through mm -hmm. the weights in a way because yeah. the audience is like watching from a little yeah. bit far back, yeah. further back. Um, but thank God that we did have the close-ups because there were moments where when we when I was cutting it, I, w I was like, oh, I don't really need like this last half of this uh -huh. scene, so uh -huh. we could just I could just cut it. So how did you make that work for you, or did was there a style in which I don't know if that's the right word, but a way in which you approached using close-ups to work for in the same way that the wides would have, but just in adjusting that vision of... Yeah, I mean, well, I guess by by going closer, it, it wasn't like as invasive as I thought it was going to be okay. initially mm -hmm. um, for each of the characters, and mm -hmm. it was like a nice safety. Mm -hmm. But then in the cutting room, that's mm -hmm. when I really realized that there was something to the close-ups. Yeah. That that like you actually need for the audience mm -hmm. to see someone closer to mm -hmm. see what's going on in their face yeah. you know um and it is powerful when someone's having a breakdown and they're crying you know in a wide shot but it's also powerful if they're if you're close on them and yeah. you see like the tear coming yeah. out of their eye yeah there's something to that well, so and if you're if you were planning on shooting a lot in wives it's yeah. a lot about the movement perhaps that's going on in the room because mm -hmm. you're catching that all mm -hmm. um was that rehearsed 
was that rehearsed that you knew where everything was going to be, or was that improv? Um, Did you rehearse that in rehearsal and then bring it into? Well, with the actors, mm -hmm. I was rehearsed up the Jaxi, so we knew mm -hmm. where we were going to be okay. at every point. Yeah. When we got there on the day with the camera, mm -hmm. um, because we knew what we were doing so well, it was mm -hmm. very easy for Andre and I to have him be like a third party. Okay in terms of if it was just Jason and I then he would be able to put the camera in a specific mm -hmm. place and we were able to mm -hmm. you know we would show him the scene basically mm -hmm. like we would do the scene one time and then mm -hmm. we would figure out where the camera needed to be and why okay and then it just became a very simple dance um that we got really good at and we were really fast yeah <laughs> did you have a shot list or mm -hmm. okay yeah but but um, you didn't know exactly how it was going to be framed or most just... of the time we knew how it was going to be framed okay because you know also a lot of the time with some scenes i did talk to him about like okay well at this part we're over here and he's mm -hmm. over here and then you know so camera can be over here and mm -hmm. we talked about that you know but like practically when you get into the room mm -hmm. It's a, it's a small space and yeah. sometimes you have to maneuver around to yeah. make sure that everybody's getting what they need and that it's actually going to be uh, like workable like there's sort of like practical elements that come mm -hmm. into play when you're not just like drawing it on a piece of paper yeah which i did a lot <laughs> <laughs> um but it was definitely a brilliant way of doing it because everybody felt like they were getting what they needed from it and mm -hmm. it wasn't like okay well something's missing or one person's feeling like they're not yeah you know it's not working yeah um I was talking a lot right there. No, no, it was interesting. It was about... Like, close-ups? You're talking about weights? It was something to do with... Oh, yes. Um, do you remember what camera you used? Sony F900. And did with you use... With different lenses. Uh-huh. Because I talked to Andre also about how I wanted it to look like a specific um, camera that my mom used to use when oh. we were growing up, that okay. she still has. Uh-huh. My mum calls her Nikon her first child. Oh, she really? Died before she, my sister was born. <laughs> yeah. So it goes uh -huh. the Nikon, my sister, and then um, that's the order. Um, is she a photographer or does she shoot? She's a photographer. Okay. I mean, she uh, she would always, and she had this very specific way of taking up a photograph, and mm -hmm. it was like the way that I wanted the film to look. So I was able wow. to show Andre a lot of those images and be like, really? wow. can we do this? And yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. So that was fun. That's really cool. Um, and I like the depth of field that she used, and uh -huh. and that's the depth of field that's basically in good depth, where like we're in focus and uh -huh. everything else is out of focus. Uh -huh. um, that's just beautiful to me when you can mm -hmm. see people. Mm -hmm. I, I There's agree. like little highlights behind that. Yeah, that's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you guys? Uh, the shoot was seventeen days. Did you guys do any reshoots? Um, no. No. No reshoots. Uh, Probably because we didn't have any money, but also because we didn't really, no, we didn't really need them. Yeah. That never really came up. That's amazing. Um, I remember thinking the day we were done, like day 18, mm -hmm. I was sitting at Jason's mom's house and I was in my pajamas and I was watching like TV for mm -hmm. the first time in like a year. Yeah. And I realized that I got everything that I wanted uh -huh. from the film uh -huh. as a director. Like I thought, you know, I had this preconceived notion that I was going to lose a third of it or lose two thirds of it or whatever, uh -huh. just because it was an indie film. And uh, I realized, like, no, man, like, we got that, we got that, we got it all. Because <laughs> you're sitting there, we got like, it. please, please tell me about everything. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> all. So that's, like, a great place to be. And when you have a cast totally rehearsed, then mm -hmm. you're not doing something that's, like, finding one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. You're doing something that is really elegant, because mm -hmm. you've got actors who are good, who mm -hmm. are bringing different colors to it, and mm -hmm. they found five different ways to do the scene. Mm -hmm. So if you can shoot those five different versions of it, yeah. then you have something to cut in the, in the cutting yeah. room, as yeah. opposed to, oh boy, this guy doesn't know his lines, let's find the one way of doing this scene right now, yeah. and maybe it's going to work, and maybe it's not. Yeah. And I, I just think it's important to have choice. Mm -hmm. um, and keep the creative process going as opposed to be like sort of dictated to by the stuff that didn't work. 